Hello! In this video we're going to be looking at expected value and standard deviations of random variables and that's a lot of letters so as one of my uh, more respective teachers likes to say the more letters the easier it is and even though this sounds really complex and really complicated I'm gonna show you a little bit of magic that you know this is the reason I love these problems they are so fun and easy um, I'm going to move pretty fast through the math, so hopefully you'll follow along. Um, but I'll give you tons of warning before I get to the magic bit, because I think it's pretty fun. So let's go ahead and read the problem. Um, first of all, this corresponds to section 4.2, Expected Values and Standard Deviations of Random Variables in the book Finite Mathematics by Daniel P. Mackey and Maynard Thompson. We are looking at problem 31, which is one of the recommended problems. And let's do our first step, which is read the problem. Joe has two quarters and one dime in his right hand pocket, and one quarter and one dime in his left hand pocket. He selects a coin at random from his right hand pocket, notes its value, and puts it in his left hand pocket. Then he selects a coin at random from his left hand pocket. A random variable x is defined as the total number of quarters selected. Find the expected value of x. So um, the first thing I do in these, well the first thing I do in every problem is we write down what we know. So First of all, we know we have a dude named Joe, and he has two pockets. He has a right pocket, and he has a left pocket. And in his right pocket, he has two quarters, I'm just going to say two Q, and one dime. And in his left pocket, he has one quarter, I'm just going to say Q, and one dime. Okay. And so what does he do? He pulls a quarter, he pulls a coin from his right pocket. He looks at it, that's my beautiful eye, and then he puts it in his left pocket. So before we get too much further, what's stuff that we know that's not here? Well, we know he has a total of three coins here, right? And what's the total number of coins in the left pocket? And you'd be, you, your first instinct is to say he has two, but actually he has three coins in this pocket as well. And why is that? Well, it's this step right here where he puts it in. He pulls it out of his right hand pocket, he eyeballs it for a second, and then he puts it in his left hand pocket. And by doing that, he ends up with three coins. Now, we don't know whether it's two quarters and one dime, or two dimes and one quarter yet, but we can figure that bit out. So, what's the first step I like to do? Well, in these kinds of problems, um, when I start hearing about the expected value of x. That tells me that this is going to be an expected value problem and we're going to want to put stuff in a chart. So let's go ahead and put stuff in a chart. So how do we do the chart? Well this is very very similar to what we saw in section 4.1 which um, let me remember what the name of that section was. Random variables and probab density functions and um, in fact it's incredibly similar. We are going to do a problem probability density function and then we're going to do some voodoo to it. It's going to be really swanky, really cool. Oh my goodness, throwing things around. And um, so our first step is to make a chart. And so x is the number of quarters. And um, we're going to say equals number of quarters. We want to know what, what the expected value of x is. So given a chart like this, we have some options. First of all, he could get two quarters out. He could pull one from both pockets. Then he could get one quarter from either his left or right pockets. And I'm actually, I'm going to go ahead and leave that as one. But there's different ways you could do that. Um, and then finally, he could get no quarters at all. And so what are we going to put here on the right? Well, on the right, we're going to do a probability function. And this one's pretty easy. So what does he do? Well, first, in order to get two quarters, what needs to happen? He needs to pull a quarter from his right hand and he needs to pull a quarter from his left hand pocket. So what's the probability that he pulls a quarter from his right hand pocket? Well, there's two quarters out of a total of three coins. So that tells me that the probability of pulling a quarter from his right hand pocket is two thirds. And, remember, and is multiplication, to get a quarter out of his left hand pocket, well if he pulls a quarter from his right hand pocket, that means he eyeballed it, and then he put it over here, right? And so that means instead of one quarter, he actually has two quarters in this pocket, and that's the only tricky part to this problem. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take that away because we're not actually doing that. Um, 
we're not going to leave that because that's not the case forever. But in this particular case, he has two quarters in his left hand pocket and one dime. So that means the chance of him pulling a quarter from his left hand pocket is dun 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 two thirds. We knew that. So okay, let's move on to the next part. He wants let's say we get one quarter. And so there's two different ways to do that, right? He could pull a quarter. I'm going to go ahead and go back up here so we can eyeball it. Um, he could pull a quarter from his right hand pocket and then not pull one from his left hand pocket or he could pull he could not pull a quarter from his right hand pocket and he could pull a quarter from his left hand pocket so that's an and then an or and then an and so I think we're gonna multiply some stuff and we're gonna add some stuff together so let's go ahead and do that so let's say, let's start with step one. He pulls a quarter from his right hand pocket. What's the chances he's going to get a quarter from his right hand pocket? Well, again, there are two quarters and three coins total, so that's two thirds times, and he doesn't get a coin from his left hand pocket. So if he pulled a quarter, and uh, I'm, I'm doing colors all over the place, but he, pull, he sees a quarter, he eyeballs it, he puts it over here on the left. That means he has two quarters and one dime. What's the chance he doesn't get a quarter. Well, that is one out of three, right? There's one non-quarter and there's three total options. Or, because there's two different ways he can only get one quarter, let's say he doesn't get a quarter from this right hand pocket. So that means he pulls a dime. What's the chance that he pulls a dime here on the right? Well, there's one dime and there's three coins total, so that's one third. And that means he has to pull a dime here on the left pocket. And so let's see, he pulls out a quarter, or I'm sorry, he pulls out the dime, he eyeballs it, he puts it over here. That means we have two dimes instead of just one, right? And so what's the chance he gets a quarter? Well, let's see, he has two dimes and one quarter. That means he has a one in three chance of getting that quarter. So here, and this is a tricky one, here he is pulling his quarter from his right hand pocket. So he pulls out a quarter, he has two quarters and one dime, he has a two out of three chance to get a quarter, then he puts it in his left hand pocket, and then since we only want one quarter total, he does not pull a qu quarter from his left hand pocket. So fair enough. And then over here on this bit, or the other way, so or, addition, uh, he does not pull a quarter from his first pocket, that means he pulls a dime, there's a one in three chance that he could pull a dime, and then he pulls a quarter from his left hand pocket, which now we have two dimes and one quarter in his left hand pocket, and so that means one third times one third. So we're almost done. I'm seeing the end of this problem, so where are we at? Okay, our last step is to how do we get no quarters at all? So that means in his first pocket, he pulls out a dime. So that is one out of three, right? So he has a one, whoops, let's make that appropriate color one in third chance to pull a dime and he puts the dime in his left hand pocket right he eyeballs it then he puts it over in his left hand pocket now he has two dimes and one quarter and again we don't want him to get any quarters so that is now two thirds and that's our chart this is you know the probability density function and now I'm gonna show you the math and this is so much fun I'm gonna do the whole thing in a different color because I just really like it so uh, before we do that part Let's go ahead and solve these. So 2 thirds times 2 thirds is 4 ninths. Uh, 2 thirds times 1 third, well that is, let's see, 2 ninths plus 1 ninth, right? And 1 third times 2 thirds, well that is 2 ninths. And before I get too much further, we're going to go ahead and make this all nice and pretty. So x. and probability. So let's see, we have 2, 1, and 0. And let's see, we have 4 ninths, we have 3 ninths, and we have 2 ninths. Okay, so here's where the magic happens. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and extend this out. And I'm not going to label this column. Um, I'm sure you could come up with a good name, but I never do. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply everything in the x column times its probability. So that's 2 times 4 ninths. That is 8 ninths. 1 times 3 ninths is 3 ninths. 
and 0 times 2 ninths is 0. And then, here's where the real magic happens, we're going to add all of these together. And so 8 ninths plus 3 ninths, well that's 11 ninths. And that, believe it or not, is our answer. That's all you got to do. You just got to fill out your chart, multiply everything in the row, so multiply this by this, and just multiply everything in each row, put them in this column all the way on the right, and then add them together. And that gives you your answer. So um, I'm going to go ahead and go over really quick what I did. I'm going to zoom out. And again, I, I love these problems because it's, it's kind of like magic. So what did we do? Well, what we did first, I'm going to go ahead and go to a nice purplish. We wrote down what we knew. And we, we kind of tried to talk about the one weird thing in this problem, which is we look, we look, pull out a quarter, we look at it, and then we put it in the other pocket. And that's kind of weird. That's the only hard part in this. Then what did we do? Well, then we made a chart. It's just a probability density chart, just like we did in the previous um, sections, section 4.1. We did the math, did the math, did the math, made our chart nice and pretty. Didn't have to do that step. I just wanted to do it because it looked kind of swanky. Then we multiply everything in our rows together, and we get an answer. And we do that all the way down multiplying all those and then we add all of those together and we get our answer which is 11 ninths and that's it's just that easy I really like these problems because I think they're a lot of fun so do some more practices um, the one tricky thing is just like in section 4.1 you're never exactly sure you know they unless they tell you um, there's not necessarily an easy way to know how to do the probability function um, one thing I will tell you is that on tests, often they'll just give you a chart that looks just like this, and you just have to do, you know, this part right over here. So play with it, do some extra, do some practice, and I think you'll find it not so bad.